it seems the problems of Nigeria is not ending. It's, we're not facing enough to keep president in the country for a long stretch of time. And some are not happy about this. And Femi Falano, a senior advocate of Nigeria, has expressed his optimism that Omoyele Shawari, convener of Revolution Now protest, might be released today. But at this time, will that still happen? This is Plus Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. Welcome. In reaction to the backlash expressed by bodies like the Nigerian Bar Association, the Yoruba Social Cultural Political Group, Afenifere, the Ohanese Ndibo, and the Transition Monitoring Group, to President Muhammad Buhari signing a bill in the United Kingdom, the National Chairman of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Adams Oshomole, has stated that a president can work from anywhere in the world. Joining us to discuss this are two uh, gentlemen. We start with political analyst Ugochuku Ikako. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And of course, we have legal practitioner Raymond Nkanebe. Pleasure Thank to have you join us. Same here. Thank you very much. Signing a bill. Let's start with the legal man here. Yes. What does the law say about this? Well, uh, unfortunately, the law appears uh, not to have envisaged this situation. You know, the draftsman of legislation can only uh, go as far as his um, imagination can carry him. I don't think they envisage a situation whereby a president will have to sign um, a bill passed by parliament outside the shores of Nigeria. So as, it's, as it is, the law is, is, is has, there's no any written law mandating the president to sign a bill within the shores of the country, unfortunately. Do we have a precedent about on this? Uh, well, I can't think of I can't think of any such precedent. So we can go with the way of with the uh, with with the conventional practice, which would dictate that such very high um, uh, uh, function of state should have been carried out in, within the chambers of the of the presidency. So uh, I, I, it's quite odd. Uh, it's quite odd for that to for him to sign the bill outside the country. Yet the question is. Has it breached any written law? And as a legal, and that's, that's a question for the judiciary to 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 answer. Lawyers will definitely be for and against the proposition. But at the end of the day, a judicial determination will put a rest to it. But as of today, we've not seen any step taken towards um, uh, uh, a judicial process uh, being taken to, uh, to 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 get that determined. I know you're itching to say something, but I need to ask you this question again. Is, yes. uh, the other one on the top of that is him uh, ruling from outside this country. The national chairman of the APC seems to think that mm. there is nothing wrong in the president um, you know, ruling the country from anywhere he is in the world. Is there any legal background to this? OK. Um, first off, the statement of the uh, of APC chairman, Comrade Adams O'Shemele, is a bit sweeping. And I think he must have taken it so in a very simplistic manner. But then, if we look at Section 145 of the Constitution, which everybody has been pointing at, that mandates the president to transmit a letter to the National Assembly uh, to officially deliver the reins of power, government to his vice, that section does not say that. That section almost leaves it at the discretion of the president. The operative word of that section is whenever the president transmits a written a declaration to the National Assembly or to the House of Rep, as the case may be, that he is proceeding on vacation or he is unable to discharge the functions of his office. You understand? The Vice President will perform those functions. Well, you just mentioned until... something about him going on a vacation. Yes. What about, pri what's the difference between a vacation and a private That's visit? That, I'm, 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 I'm getting there. We are told that Buhari has gone on a private visit, right? That is quite open. So I don't want to put it under a vacation, as it were. Because if you are on vacation, you won't perform any function of state. You understand? So he, has, he, is, he feels he is still able to uh, carry on the duties of his office. And by assigning that uh, bill outside the shores of this country, it doesn't stop him from carrying on those. So Section 145 has not mandated him to do so. And then when you look at Section 146 of the Constitution, it came close to clearly stating circumstances 
whereby the vice president would take over the functions of the president. And there are a number of options. When the president dies, when he's impeached, when he resigns, or when he's permanently incapacitated to carry on the functions of his office. In these circumstances, the vice president is mandated. The operative word there is shall. The vice president shall carry on the functions of his office. Now, all of these scenarios are not on the table. You understand? So that's why I believe the presidency, Adam Sushumala and the rest of them, they have looked into the laws, and it tends to give them some standing to make such sweeping statement that he can rule from anywhere. Because the question would be, he is not permanently incapacitated, right? So he can still carry on the duties of his office. The question being question of geography. OK. Ugojiku. <laughs> So, <laughs> You've heard the legal person talk from your perspective as a political analyst in yeah. this country. Is there a precedent? Is something not looking right? Or, I mean, do we take the explanation that's been given by the presidency first? He just cleared something up. Vacation and private visit doesn't seem to, um, private is not captured in the constitution. Yes. And he is not incapacitated in any way. What is your take? Put all of this together. Well, uh, Nigeria presently as it stands is the capital of any harness in the world. So we're in a place where everybody is doing what he feels that they can do. Right? So Adams or Shimole or whatever they call him, uh, I, don't, I don't care about what he says. All right? The thing is this, uh, even at his worst, when if we, we've seen dictators, we've seen tyrants in the past, and they, have, they all had uh, people that cheer them on to the very end. The things now went sad for them. So uh, Adam Sushimola wouldn't have said this thing he's saying now uh, under the Good Luck administration. He wouldn't have. All, right? all of them. All right? So for them, it's all about petty politics. For other ones, it's all about petty politics. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Emil Sibanjo. All right? Uh, because uh, if, if, you, if you bring a wood infested firewood into your house, you should live with it. All right? So but my issue is this. Uh, there should be a part where things are done right. But I, I, don't, I don't expect them to do it. Right? Because if you, have, if you have a vice president and a president that were both elected on a joint mandate to, leave, to lead the country, to serve the country, you're leaving the country for days and you're saying on a private visit. You're not even telling the country what the private visit is all about. We're not, we're not children. We're, we're, we're not joke. We're paying you. The reason that you're on that jet, the reason that you're flying, the reason that you're going anywhere you're going is because you are serving, you are, you are serving the country. You are not there, you are not there to serve your, uh, your kinsmen in Dara. You are not there to serve the of Dara. You are there to lead the nation. And the nation needs an explanation. So private visit does not cut it. If you are going for hospital treatment, tell us. You are going to be out for more than uh, 14 days or so. And it's private visit. And in the midst of that, you are taking serious documents, serious uh, uh, materials that are not supposed to step outside the, 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 the borders of Abuja or Nigeria to UK to sign. And who is doing that for your chief of staff? There's, there's, there's a lot of reaction, just the way you're reacting. Even legal practitioner, senior advocates of Nigeria, organizations like Ohane Zendibo, as we mentioned during the intro, all of them have come out to say something is not right. Let something me stick right. with Afeni Ferre. Okay. Their comment about Ochiba Njo is practically out of the Buhari's government because he wasn't given, um, power was not handed over to him. The presidency has come out to dismiss that as mere illusion. And we also see the vice president presiding over the Federal Executive Council meeting and other um, functions that would have been the president. We had um, um, a retreat for police officers here. It was supposed to be the president, but the vice president was there acting in capacity. Would you say that what is missing is just documentation, but that, in fact, the vice president is representing the president? Well, like you said, I, I think the president doesn't need anybody to represent him. He doesn't. Because if he needed anybody to represent him, he would have transmitted the letter to the National Assembly. And he didn't do that, and he left the country. So uh, whatever is happening in Abuja, whatever is happening in Abuja at the moment, what are Fanny Ferry, everybody is saying, just pure politics, all right? And as it stands at the moment, uh, uh, it's, not, it's, it's clear to the blind, even the deaf can hear it, that uh, Yemi Usibanjo is not the star boy that, they think, that he thinks that he is. Right? What is so clear to the... Because I am... No, most no, Nigerians no, will say, well, no, we don't know what's going on. No, if it, you know, tell us. Well, well the, the, uh, is, the, 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 the truth is this. 
for, for in, in politics, there is actual power, and you can have your ceremonial power. You're the vice president, all right? As the vice president, you are the mercy of the president, all right? If you're with a president that doesn't understand that you guys have a joint mandate, it'd be difficult for you to function. And the truth is this, uh, it, it, whatever we've seen so far, all right, in the news, the rumors, or whatever we've seen so far, it shows that the fact is that he, the, the president values his chief of staff more than he values the vice president. Right? And it shows, and we've seen so far, we've seen in the news, Premium Times and the rest of it reported it that, that, that uh, the VP, his, uh, some of his aides have been sacked. And we saw some of the key ministries, uh, some key departments and agencies under the, president, uh, the vice presidency has been removed over the last few weeks. Uh, and so, and today was in the news that the presidency uh, from the chief of staff, his, some of his key aides has been removed. So it shows, see, the truth is this, what is happening in, in Abuja, see, they, they, like they said, there's no smoke without fire. Something that is happening at the moment shows that the vice president is not the beloved of the key players in Asolok. And the president has shown it that you are not needed. If he needs me calling, the, 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 the chief of staff left Abuja, went to London to do business with the president and finished and came back. So uh, for me, I think what we're seeing is that the vice, the vice president is just performing ceremonial functions. Just go here, go here, sign, come and clap, come and say, take pictures, do all those things for photo ops. He does not wield serious power, and his position is, is practically uh, useless at the moment. He's just like a spectator that is not needed. But it, it, the, let me, the, what is so urgent about this bill that it was signed before, it was passed into law, I believe, before the president went on this trip. It could have been signed before he went. Maybe he wasn't ready, we don't know. But what is so urgent that it couldn't wait for the president to return one, and then it couldn't be signed by the vice president. What, what is at play? Well, the, taking the first limb of the question, what is so urgent? I also had a moment of personal thought about that. I don't see any, yes, in terms of the, uh, the, the, the fortunes it has to fetch the country economic-wise. The bill is, is an instructive one. But it could also wait for the next two to three weeks when the president is back to sign it. And then on the other leg of why did the vice president sign it? You see, it was um, the late Biafran warlord, Chukwe Mekao de Mego Juku, who described the office of the vice president, or a deputy governor as it were, as the proverbial vulture that will not feast or feed on the prey until it is dead. You understand? So the office of a vice president or a deputy governor in our democracy cannot come to life until the president is no longer in the picture. You understand? The constitution has, I don't know how, but there is a way it has put the office of the vice president just under. And they can only come to life to the extent or to the whims and caprices of their bosses because they became vice president at the pleasure of their boss. The law says before you, become the, you can contest, you must nominate somebody to be your deputy. So there is this sense of self serviency that exists between deputies or vice and their bosses. So they are forced to just lay low and sell as much as their bosses would allow them to. And then there is a sense in which, historically, uh, this is supported. I don't know, the, I don't know the, the thinking that has made it so. Because I looked at the 1979 constitution before coming here, and I noticed that there is no mention of the office of the vice president in terms of whether he can deputize for the president or not. The current constitution only came close in section 146 to state those four conditions under which the vice president can officially act for the president. So for me, I'm seeing this in terms of it gives us a sense, it's a pointer for a constitutional reform. Let us look at our deputy governors and vice president and see how we can actually nominate their powers in the constitution, so that they are not going to be, uh, they are not going to uh, be at the mercy of their bosses. Just the same, just the way we saw in Kogi State the other day, a deputy governor was impeached in very short circumstances, and nothing has happened. It is because the constitution does not tend to give the vice president or the deputy governors any, 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 any presence in the. I'm in the tempted to start asking questions about what we can do about that and all of it, but that mm -hmm. is not the focus of this conversation. The conversation is basically about the president signing a bill out of the shores of this country. Mm -hmm. And a chairman, a national chairman, it's instructive what he said, that there is, seemed to be a lack of due process in the government of Buhari for the chief of staff to take a bill to the president in London. Is it really 
Is there something that is not due process in all of this from a legal perspective? Well, I, I, I agree that there is something uh, not, there's a lot not, not been right with the whole process. Ordinarily, that's assuming we are going to um, justify the act of traveling out of the country with that bill, I should think it should be uh, Senator, is it Ita Ina, who should take that document, being the senior legislative aide of the president, who interfaces between the National Assembly and the presidency. I don't see the reason why the chief of staff should be the one handling that document. Because it's, it has helped to justify the, 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 the permutations or suggestions of persons who feel that the chief of staff have, occupies a, 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 larger, a larger than life uh, position in this administration. Okay, there are some that are saying that this does not look good for us at all, that the president is going abroad, um, trying to rule a country from a foreign um, environment, and those that surround him don't seem to see anything uh, wrong in that. Is this a valid position? Are we making a rubbish of the image of this country to our foreign partners? Like I said earlier, before you even asked me this question, I've said it already, that uh, Nigeria will not be the first time or the second time that we've seen tyrants in history that had or dictators or people that have abused constitutional process, had supporters or uh, uh, supporters club clapping for them, cheering them out till their very end. Uh, it's not the first time, right? It's sad, and this is not the first thing that this administration is doing that portrays us to the uh, to the world on, on, on a very wrong note, right? So, and. The Adams of Shimola and the rest of them, they know the truth, all right? But these are men that these, these are men that are not driven by principles, they're driven by their belly, which is their God. So it's easy for them to say yes sir, to the president, yes sir, to the president, because they want to stay close. They just want to keep uh, uh, eating from the national cake the way they put it down, down here in Nigeria. Because the truth is this uh, Nigeria is beyond Buhari, Nigeria is beyond uh, Shimola, Nigeria is beyond APC. So if by chance, uh, Providence, you're, you're, you're in a position of authority, and you feel that the right thing to do is to keep giving the wrong advice or keep telling the president to continue when he's doing something that is wrong, right? Because the president left for private visit. You can't tell the country that he's leading, our own president. So we're saying, what is private visit? It does not even make sense, all right? And uh, apart from that, we, 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 we took a serious uh, document that, had, that, that, that is all about the sovereignty of the country that, that has a lot to do with uh, investment and the rest of them, the things in this country. And... You, you flew hours to UK, and the, the person that went to do that, like he said, wasn't the senior legislative aide, he was the chief of staff. It shows the world that we're joking, it shows the world that we're not serious, it shows the world that we're not serious. Serious people won't take us, uh, people that, investors and the rest of them won't take us serious, because it shows that, it's, like I said earlier, it's, it's, this is the capital of any harness. Because you can, you can have something serious going for you, somebody will just come in because he has access to the president and rubbish your effort and making it, make it difficult for you to, to follow a due process of, or have the law to have this full call. Because what I'm showing us is that the most important thing is access to the president. It's not about due process. It's, it's not about doing things the legal way. Because if it was supposed to be done right, Kiari or uh, whatever is his name should be in Abuja. There's something you said that reminded me of something I read on this particular subject. Somebody was saying that um, if a document, I think somebody from uh, Hanez and Deep also, okay. that if a document is signed into law outside the shores of Nigeria, that it, it is not binding on the people of Nigeria, that laws that are to govern Nigerians should be signed in Nigeria. Is there any truth to that for well, our viewers? I, I, I think I, I, I read that, but I think um, that was an effort at pushing uh, the jurisprudence rather too far, right? The laws are passed by parliament. And once they are passed, even, uh, I know the president has to assent to bills before they become laws as it were. But then even this, the parliament also have the veto power to override that assent. So for me, I would rather see it as the moment the bill has been passed by both House, both, uh, house of the National Assembly, uh, whatever it is being signed, provided that it is signed by the right person that is stated in the Constitution, the issue of geography would not arise. In your opinion, Ogochiku, what would be a better way for the government to have handled this entire situation without giving us this conversation, um, bringing this conversation up uh, for us to be having tonight? What would have been the right thing to have done? 
considering the importance that is attached to this bill. Before the president had decided to leave the country for uh, more than 14 days, he should have transmitted power to Yemi Osibanjo. That would have been the right thing to, to that would have been the right thing to, you know, that's, that, that's the right thing, you know, transmit power to, the, to, the, to, to your vice president. You are leaving the country, you're not going to be around for uh, days, more than 14 days, and only God knows the, the, uh, what you're doing over there, whether you are going for uh, treatment or whether you're going to be under the doctor's eyes and the rest of them, meaning that you might not be capable, both mentally and physically, to do the tags that you've, that you've been elected for. So there's nothing bad in saying, okay, my VP, uh, let me transmit power to the National Assembly, do the things the right way, like you said, according to Section 146. Then this guy takes over for the period I'm going to be away. Then when I come back, I continue, and I continue with my inner harness, and everything will be fine. So that, that mistake... Failure you know, fail, fail to do that has brought us into this conversation and it's showing the world that we're not serious people, that we don't understand how democracy works, we don't understand uh, the need for a due process and for the rule of law in 2019. And it's, 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 it's a very sad thing. There seems to be a trust deficit. I mean, it, it doesn't seem like there is a trust deficit between the people and the government of this country. And the government say they're working hard to bridge that gap so people tend to believe more what the government is saying. But on the case, I'm, still, I'm going to go back, and that's the last uh, question tonight, the vice president's situation, alleged situation uh, of uh, being pushed out of the government as it were, you know, why is this persistent in the media? Speculations, conversation, analysis, being written about it. What more can this government do to allay concerns that there is friction between the two leading figures in the country? Well, I think it's already uh, too late for the government to make any step at correcting that impression. It was not, this is not the first time we've been hearing these, um, uh, these talks about a rift between the president and vice president. And if, I would think that if the presidency ha had it in its mind to correct that impression, this was a perfect opportunity for them, to, for, him to, for them to have done that. But the president writing that letter and officially tr transferring the reins of offices to his vice, that would have cleared doubts or those allayed all those fears. But by going further to do this, it will only help to perpetuate such suspicions. And we've heard from very notable uh, organizations who have uh, aired their, their, their sentiment on the issue. That's where we'll have to stop it for now. I hope the conversation continues after here. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your thoughts Only so far. Pleasure. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be speaking on the latest update on Omoyele Showare's incarceration. Stay with us. <laughs>